welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelley. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Happy Saturday. It is the weekly energy card reading, and what that is is you, the viewer, get to choose from one of three tarot or oracle decks, and we'll go ahead and do a brief spread to see what the general energies will be like for the next seven days. It does not need to be the week of May 8th through the May 15th, 2021, in order for the messages to resonate. If you come across this reading at any time, there might be nuggets of information contained. If you ever want to jump straight to your reading, the timestamps are in the description box below, as are the names and the authors of the decks that I use. Now, today, we, um, I always try to keep all of my decks in rotation when we, uh, when we do these readings. And uh, to, this week, we have a very special deck that's being added. It's a new deck, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. The first deck that we have is the Line Strider Tarot by Celio Thompson. It's a deck we haven't used in a while, so I'm really excited to use it again to bring it back out. And with it, we have a beautiful blue fluorite stone. Now, the second deck I am seriously excited about, and actually this, uh, this, uh, today is this deck's debut on my channel. Um, this is actually, um, it's interesting, if you watch my other deck collection videos, um, my tarot deck collection, um, I actually have a timestamp in that video where it, it talks about um, the... Um, it talks about the myth of, of whether or not you should always um, be gifted your first tarot deck or whether or not it's okay for you to buy your first tarot deck. And um, if you watch, if, you're, if, you if you frequent my channel, you'll know that um, I have a, a tarot deck called the, uh, the Tarot of Art Nouveau or the Art Nouveau, the Art Nouveau Tarot by Los Garibaud. And that was my formal first deck that I ever purchased, and I did purchase it for myself. And then later, uh, years later, I went ahead and got the Morgan Greer Tarot, which turned out to be the, the deck that I actually formally learned tarot on. Um, because there's what it happens is in tarot, there's a lot of pretty card decks, and then you buy the pretty card deck, and then you don't really learn anything because you, you need the symbolism, right? But... Um, I actually, a few weeks ago, right around Easter time, my sister uh, came over to visit me and she goes, I have a present for you. And I was really, really excited because I've never, I've never been gifted a tarot deck. Like I've never been given one. I've always, my first tarot decks, I, all of my tarot decks I've purchased for myself and that's fine. There's no stigma to buying this tarot deck for yourself. Um, a lot of times some, some some folks will say that it's better to be gifted one for your first deck just because it has like that extra kind of magic to it. But I, it's there's really no right or wrong way to start uh, if you buy your own tarot deck or if, it, if it's given to you. But I was stupid excited because my sister came to visit me and she goes, I have a, I have a present for you. And, um, and I, I not only read tarot, but I watch a whole ton of tarot videos here on YouTube. So I am very well versed with the, the different and cool decks that they have out there in the, in the tarot verse. And, um, but this was absolutely amazing. Um, she presented me with a new tarot deck. And this, and this very much, I have never seen this deck before. And I was just so excited when she said, oh, I've, I've been watching tarot readings and I've seen a few of my readers use this deck. And what this is, is this is the transparent tarot. And it is, it's in its second edition. So I have the second edition. What is absolutely gorgeous about these cards is that these cards are translucent. They're made on plastic. And there's actually, it comes with like a, 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 a white um, cloth that you wrap them in. And I actually, I went ahead and upgraded to like a all 100% a cotton um, wrap cloth for it. But what happens is each of the cards is translucent. And what it is, is you have the, you have the suit on the side. And then the number, if it's, if it's a, if it's a minor card, the number is listed on the side of the card. And then there's an image that's on it in in the center. All of the majors are listed as numbers across the top or the bottom. And what happens is when you shuffle the card as they come out, you can read the cards together as they overlap. And so what you do is like this is the chariot, this is the uh, the wheel of fortune, and this is the world. 
And what happens is when you overlap them together, it becomes an entirely different imagery and different interpretation with the combined forces of all of those images. And here we have like the Five of Wands. So you can put the Five of Wands on top and you can see through the cards, you can see the numbers of the major arcana at the top and the bottom. You can see the minors at the side and you can see the, the um, and you can see the, um, the suit. So what happens is it becomes this entire story. So like Six of Pentacles and then Three of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, Three of Wands. So you have Six of Pentacles giving back from a situation to which you are benefiting. Then you've got the Three of Wands, which is cooperation. Another Three with, um, I'm sorry, Three of Pentacles, which is cooperation. Three of Wands, which is awaiting results. And the Page, and look at that. There's an entire story that's coming through the layering of these cards. And I was absolutely freaking blown away. And so deck number two, long story short, I'm going to timestamp this. I'm sorry to ramble. But um, it's absolutely gorgeous because you can read, it gives such a, a layered, literally, story. And um, and again, this is triply, this is quadruply special. Um, it's my first ever gifted deck. It's from someone I love dearly. It's from my sister. Um, it's it's a deck I've never seen before, which is crazy because I watch so many tarot readers, and um, and it's a very rare deck. Apparently, it, it's it's apparently sells out pretty quickly, um, but this is really really freaking cool. And it's like it's the most different. It's it's different. It's different from anything that I've used before. So long story short, the second deck is the transparent tarot, and with it we have a beautiful um, clear quartz. One, one end is polished and the other end is raw, so I thought that was very apropos. And the last deck we haven't seen in a while, and this one is also a unique deck. This is the Vice Versa Tarot by Lo Los Garibo. What it is is this card, um, this deck actually does not have a for formal card back. The, um, the Three of Pentacles is coming out a lot, a lot already. But um, what what happens is when you when the card flips or comes out uh, backwards, it, it is seen as being read in the reverse. And with it, we have a beautiful Dalmatian Jasper. And this is actually one of my favorite stones. This was actually tumbled by a friend of mine who who um, had a, a, a stone tumbling machine, has a has a stone tumbling machine. Um, now, to clarify the read, I was really drawn to use the Oracle cards. Um, Ask your guides by Sonia Choquette. I never know if I'm saying her name right, but um, this deck has been really speaking to me this week. And again, I've been using the the middle deck for my for per for myself, and I've been using I've really been turning to these cards a lot for really direct answers. So I'm really glad to bring them out. But these are the three decks, and of course we have a new deck that's really really freaking cool. So, um, but I, I do ask that you know try to choose from your intuition. Um, if you need more time, please pause the video. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. Let me go ahead and move up the other decks. Make sure my my microphone was acting a little wonky this morning, so um, I don't know if I have to replace it. I might have to. So we'll see. We shall see. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right, so deck number one, the Line Strider Tarot, which is also a really beautiful deck. I love this deck. I need to, I need less decks so I don't, I love all of them so dearly. It's hard to part with any, but all right, so deck number one, the Line Strider Tarot. What is your energy for the week? Ooh, wow. Oh my gosh. Uh, middle of the week, please. I'm going to go deep for deck one, please. One card. Okay, energy from the middle of the week. Okay, we're going to go with this one. Okay. End of the week, please. Oh, wow, we got quite a few threes here, guys. And the sun. Okay, that's, a, that's very promising. 
So let's go ahead and, and we got an invention. Oh, I love this deck. I love this card. I love this deck, but I love this card. Okay. So wow, guys, the beginning of the week is going to be quite a powerhouse. Um, you got three major arcanas here. And um, like we said, I, I always think of major arcanas as being like the gear of a clock. Um, what it is is you, the major arcanas, um, it doesn't mean that something crazy is going to happen to you on Monday. Um, <laughs> and actually, this kind of starts over the weekend, so this is kind of your weekend energy. But um, what it kind of means is it means, it means that you have some bigger changes going on in your life, and you're really going to feel the effects of the, those changes in the beginning of the week. Now, what I kind of see here is the beginning of the week, um, you got the lovers. And what's really beautiful is in the, the illustration in this card shows two sand cranes. And um, sand cranes actually mate for life, so that's really beautiful. But what that really reminds me of also is that the, the two cranes really kind of remind me of the Lenormand symbolism. When, um, when you see the two, um, the two birds... Um, it's not, well, it's not the birds, it's, it, in Lenormand, the two cranes, um, or the stork, means movement, and, um, and usually it means movement in regards to, like, family, like, maybe you're expecting family, but, um, what I kind of see here in the beginning of the week, you know what, I'm, this is really interesting, guys, because this, this card, the King of Cups, really wanted to slide out, which is kind of the, I feel like the universe is kind of telling me to take that card. Um, I think in the beginning of the week, I think, I think you're really standing strong in a decision to move forward. And I know that sounds a little funny. Um, ooh, I'm sorry, we were out of focus. But, um... Sometimes I would see this combination because the ma the magician is like manifestation. It's like saying, okay, I I I'm, the magician gets what he wants, right? He he goes out and he he uses the resources on the table to to get what he wants, right? And strength is really about like pushing down your base desires, or or it's it's about cooperating with your base desires. Um, I always kind of see the strength card a little bit of needs versus wants. So what I'm really kind of seeing here, and, and I'll be honest, guys, in the beginning of the week, um, if if you've recently made a decision about a relationship, like maybe you had a choice between two partners, and you finally just said, okay, I'm going with this decision. I'm going with this person. I'm not going to think about this other person. Um, I think you're really kind of reining yourself in to stick with that decision and I know that sounds a little weird but um because that's the other thing with the king of cups the king of the cups is an emotionally faithful person he's someone who honors his emotions on what he decides to do from his heart right um sorry for the background noise but I kind of get <laughs> The, the the irony is that we have like a car alarm going off in the background so I <laughs> I wonder if you have some kind of alarm going off in your head, like making you question whether or not you made a right decision about a relationship. But in the beginning of the week, it's almost like it's almost like you're holding out for a decision that you made, uh, like love-wise, and you're you're pushing forward with it, right? Like you're saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm committing to this person. I'm sticking with this person. And that's what I kind of see. And also with the, the crossover to the Lenormand interpretation, that's movement, right? It's movement forward. So what you're doing is you're you're manifesting a future and you're sticking with it, right? It's almost like you're 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 telling yourself, okay, this is this is the plan. Okay, self, this is what we're doing. But um, I also get the sense that it involves some kind of relationship. Now, this could be some kind of major plan to, if you're planning to move in with somebody, or if, if maybe you're engaged or moving forward with an engagement. Um, what, it, what you kind of feel is like in the beginning of the week, you're going to be really focused on that. Like you're going to be focused on forward movement. And it's almost like you saying, okay, you know, this is, the, this is what we're doing. We're moving forward. 
Now, one other thing that I kind of see here is it's quite possible that you might be dealing with someone who's kind of like maybe you are recently engaged and, and your fiance is, is making marriage plans or or maybe you're, you've been dating someone and you finally say, hey, should we move in together? And the other person is kind of like going, hey, honey, I, I, I checked out this place. You know, we can move in the first of, you know, June, da, 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 da. And it's, uh, it's almost like you kind of like, it's almost like you, in the beginning of the week, it's like you becoming comfortable with the decision that you made. Like, okay, this is happening, right? Movement is happening. And, um, and I do think that you might have a little stirring under the surface because even if it's positive change, like maybe you could be you could be really excited, you know, uh, to to start this new life with someone. But sometimes that means letting go of old, you know, like letting go, like moving away from some place that you lived for a long time. And sometimes that does stir up. It takes a lot of strength to say, OK, we're going to continue forward. Um, the other thing that I kind of get from this is that maybe someone is kind of making plans with you and there is form and movement. I do see that it's in regarding to love. So it's, I really think that it's probably like a boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse that's kind of being like, hey, we're going to do this. Hey, we're going to do that. And it's almost like it's a little unnerving, not in a bad way, but it's change. And it's almost like you have to remind yourself, okay, yes, we're in this together. This is what we're doing. Um, but it is going to feel like a lot of movement regarding, um, you know, your, your other half in the beginning of the week. Now, the middle of the week, this is really kind of interesting energy. Um, I will come out and say, if this, if this beginning of the week energy result, um, if this really was like a choice, because the lovers can be a choice, if you did like turn down one person in order to go with another person relationship wise the middle of the week you're going to be feeling kind of the sting of that um not in a bad way but the king of cups is very emotionally faithful like he stays he sticks to what he is emotionally committed to but the three of swords talks about uh, the three of swords talks about separation or like kind of the pain of being away from someone. So um, one way that I kind of read this is if this was some kind of choice, if you said, okay, I'm turning down one option in order to go um, with another person, then it's almost like you're saying, okay, I decided to go with this other relationship. I'm, that's my decision. I'm sticking to it. But you are kind of feeling the pain of, of what, what the, the, the person that you turned down. Um, the other thing that I can kind of see here is that it's quite possible that if this was a decision, um, a love decision, that you might have to tell someone that, okay, you're not my choice. And that might be causing some pain with someone. It might cause a sharp, sudden pain for someone. Um, but what I'm really getting from this, guys, is that I'm really getting like, like a pain of separation. Um, one way that uh, one other way I can kind of read this is that maybe if you're planning to move to another state or another place, and your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your fiance is already there, and you're away from each other you might be kind of missing them. You know, there's a separation there. But with it being the Three of Swords, I really do kind of get that there's three elements here. Um, yeah, I am getting a sense like you've decided to commit to something emotionally and you're sticking to it, but it's taking strength, right? Like it's taking strength. It's almost like in your base desires, you're kind of questioning the decision, the, the path not taken. And by the middle of the week, by the beginning of the week, it's almost like you feel all good, hunky dory about the decision you made. You, the 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 longing to about what you what you left behind is a little bit, you know, it's tugging at you a little bit, but it's almost like you can kind of push it to the side and ignore it. But by the middle of the week, it's almost like you're really feeling it. You're kind of feeling like the decision that you didn't make is going to kind of sting a little bit more. Um, now. Either that or you might be actually feeling a physical separation from someone. 
Now, the Three of Swords, one other way that I kind of read this is that if you have to stay, like maybe you, you maybe you're moving with your your uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, you know, fiance, and you're looking forward to moving to a new place, but you have to stay behind because of a job, like you're not able to join the other person just yet. In the middle of the week, you're really going to be feeling separated from them. Because again, the Three of Swords doesn't have to be a third person. Sometimes it can be a situation or some kind of something that's going on. Um, but the root of it is that, um, that, you know, the King of Cups is a very emotionally faithful person, right? Um, one, just one last way that I can kind of read this is that if you did recently go through a separation from someone, you might be kind of hurt by the way that they're, you know, if someone said, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be with you anymore. You might be kind of hurt in the middle of the week by the way that they're, they're being so um, devoutly faithful to the other person. And I'm sorry to say it that way, but that is one way that I kind of read these cards. And, and I do. I'm, I'm not saying that in a trite way. I really do. I believe me. I, I know. I, I've been there and I feel you. Um, because, you know, this, this combination is kind of that situation where maybe you were dating with someone someone, and they, would, they just could never commit or they would just never give you priority. And then all of a sudden you break up and then they turn around and start dating someone and then it's like all the things that they didn't give you their their all of the positive traits that they wouldn't express to you they're expressing in their new relationship now a number one that is hundred percent honeymoon phase and that can totally be rebound so don't don't take that as the you know honest to Zeus what's going on in their situation but the other the side effect of that is that sometimes um, Sometimes it can kind of hurt you by the way that you kind of look at them and think, well, God, you know, I worked so hard at this relationship to try to just get little, you know, just little inklings of respect, of mutual respect, you know, of, of kindness and receptivity. And this person, you know, we break up and then all of a sudden this person is off and just being being the king of cups you know you can we had a tarot on the king of cups just being that king of cups to someone else and you can go it, it's it is definitely kind of wtf you know you can kind of be like really really <laughs> you know um but you know the, and one final way that i can kind of read that is that maybe you have maybe in your own relationship that you decided to leave somebody behind because they weren't treating you right and you decided to continue with a relationship with someone who is really good, someone who is like a king of cups, someone who treats you right, but then you still just feel, it's almost like below the surface, you still feel that pang of separation from whatever it is that you gave up, right? Because the king of cups, you can be a woman in this energy and maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're remaining faithful to something that you're trying to leave behind and it just, you're, you're just going to kind of feel it. You're going to kind of feel that separation and it's going to be a little stinging in the middle of the week. Now, by the end of the week, this is really interesting, guys. We got another three. And what's interesting is that the lovers is a six, which is three and three. But at the end of the week, you got the Three of Wands. And I really do love the imagery in this card. You got two stags. So um, by, the, by the end of the week, um, I get the sense, like, I think by the end of the week, you're really... You're in a good emotional place, but it's almost like you're 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 ready. You're it's almost like you're looking ahead to the future in order for all this all this separation and all these kind of flagging emotions. You're looking towards the future to for what's next, right? You're you're kind of waiting for your ships to come in. Because um, one thing that I see with the stag is the stags are leaders, right? They're the, the leaders of their clan. So I really get the sense that if this is your energy, it's it's almost like you're you're ready for you're you're tired of living in the past and it's it's like you're ready for the next thing. Um so one other way I can see it is if 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 this is your energy, well, this is your energy, uh, but if 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 you've been kind of missing someone or feeling separate from someone, it's almost like by the end of the week, um, you know how 
Um, it's it's said in psychology that it re when you plan for a vacation or you plan when you when you make a plan as to what your next course of action is, um, that releases positive endorphins in your brain. Like it's very it's very good for your psychological mindset for you to think about. It's almost like instead of worrying about what you can't control, it's it's planning for what you can control. Um, so I get the sense that by the end of the week, if this is a decision to leave someone behind, you are looking towards the future. Like you're you're ready to leave this person in the past and you're ready to be a real leader for that direction. Now, you are still waiting, so you know, you're it's like you're waiting for your ships to come in, but at least you're you're looking towards the future rather than ruminating, ruminating about the past. If this is a separation from someone, um, like again, like that first scenario where somebody is making plans to go somewhere and you're kind of separated from them, by the end of the week you're going to be, um, you, it's almost like you're going to be participating a little bit more uh, with that process, with these changes, like you might have a say in what's going on. Either that or the person who's making the plans, like your, your husband, girlfriend, boyfriend's hubby um, will communicate to you what's next and it's like you're looking forward to that right you're 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 excited the other thing is with wands it's like you're excited about what's coming right and instead of feeling that separation you're going to turn that that kind of anxiety into a positive by saying okay you know um, I have this to look forward to in the future and uh, with the wands it's quite possible that you might be you know Plan, either planning some action or um, ready to take action for those next steps. So over the weekend, that's really exciting, right? It's it's almost like you're you're getting excited about what's to come. Now your um, your card is really beautiful. I I like this card. It's really pretty. It says invention, and with invention, it's your creativity guides, and it's number twenty six, and it says. Um, adaptation and adjustment. Oh my gosh, how how awesome is that? That we've been kind of talking about that with movement. Sometimes life gives you lemons, but not to worry. Your creativity guides are on hand, helping you transform your lemons into lemonade. No matter who you are or what circumstances you've inherited, life is always a blend of both positive and negative. Your creativity guides urge you to be grateful for the pluses in your life and to be creative with the negatives. They'll help you use your inventiveness to transform any adverse situation into one for the better. So rather than dwell on your lousy childhood, true though it may have been, appreciate the courage it developed in you and use it to change the unsupportive past into a self-reliant present. Rather than endure an unfulfilling job, be resourceful and start, a business, uh, start the business you've dreamed of for years. This is not to deny the pain in your life, but to use it as an incentive to move to higher ground. Allow your creativity guides to serve you. They're not afraid of the lemons you encounter in life. Gather their juice as fuel to invent be much better circumstances and ask them for inspiration and ideas. They have plenty to share. Their message, when you get lemons, make lemonade. Wow, guys. So again, you know, if if you feel like, you know, again, with the three and the three, if you feel like, and this so talks about this, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, you know, the three of swords, three of wands, instead of, um, instead of thinking about the sting of what happened to you, try to use that energy to, you know, kind of transmute, mutate that negative into something really positive. Maybe maybe you are kind of feeling like you're you maybe you are being emotionally faithful to something that's really hurting you or putting you in a bad situation. By the end of the week, think about the ways that you can take the the good of that situation and change it into something better. The other thing is that it really is talking about creativity and wands are creative. So maybe it can say, you know, maybe over the weekend do something creative or or try to try to try to use this energy to a positive end 
and if you're at a lack of ideas try to reach out to your guides i think i really get the sense that there might be some kind of hobby that you do that makes you feel better by the end of the weekend and by participating in that hobby it's almost going to kind of exercise any negative emotions and help you feel better about what the future has in store so wow guys oh my gosh that's a good week i do love this deck i need to pull it out more often all right so deck number two and again we're all excited this is the transparent tarot so that's that new cool deck that i was telling you about in the intro this is a gifted deck my first ever gifted deck my sister gave it to me uh, recently and um, just to recap what it is is that the cards are clear they're transparent and what happens is when you overlap them they give you a clear like they really uh, convey the energies like I can read these cards like really well um, with the way that they overlap but let's go ahead and see deck number two what's your energy for the beast so, and we've got the four of pentacles okay. in the middle of the week please we've got the knight of cups so oh, how cool is that End of the week, please. Okay, and please clarify the Four of Pentacles. We'll go ahead and one card, please. Clarify. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get your Oracle card. Ooh, that flipped. Very cool, guys. Compromise. Okay. All right, so in the beginning of the week, and again, I, I need to get a plane. I'm, I think I'm going to invest in like a linen ta tablecloth. But the beginning of the week, you got the you got the four. Uh, what that is is that's. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong one. Uh, you got the four of pentacles, and behind it, you got the empress, which I know you can kind of tell. Uh, what it is is the numbers for this are listed at the top, so you got a three there. But um, so you got the, and what's beautiful is when you layer these cards on top of each other, you, you see very clearly, you know, the four of pentacles on top of, uh, you know, uh, like it's almost like a conjunct of the energy. So the beginning of the week, um, oh my gosh, guys. So the, the, the beginning of the week, the four of pentacles on top of the empress, um, I kind of read this one of two ways. Um, one way that I kind of read it is that um, you might be kind of holding on to something in a little bit of a mothering way. Like maybe um, it's possible that you might be holding on to... I know this sounds a little funny, but you know how sometimes if you're if you're a mother, um, you know when when your child wants to be more grown up than they are, it's almost like you want to kind of hold on to them. You want to say, you know, D -d don't leave me, don't grow up. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of feeling a little bit of that energy. It's it's almost like in a nurturing way, you're kind of holding on to something at the beginning of the week, um, and that could be a person. Um, one other way that I kind of read it is that it's possible, another way that we can read that is that it's possible that maybe you're taking care of a mother figure and at the beginning of the week, it's almost like, um, it's, it's almost like you kind of want to, it's, it's not that you're trying to be stingy, but it's almost like you don't have a whole lot of money to give. So it's almost like you're kind of you're kind of hesitant like you're you're dreading that phone call like your mom calling you up and going hey honey can you can you go to the grocery store and pick this up for me and you know you don't you don't have a whole lot of money to spend so you're really hoping you know that you don't um you're kind of peeling off the bills from the wallet and it's again not that you're trying to be stingy it's just you don't have a whole lot to give and maybe you know you're you know if it's your mom she's trying to um, you know, ask you for something and it's like, how, how do you say no? It's your mom, right? If you are a mother, um, it could be the reverse where maybe you have a child who's asking, you know, you to pay for something and, and the budget might be a little bit slim, you know, and again, it's, again, I'm getting a strong sense, like you want to accommodate 
this person you want to just give them anything that they want because you're very nurturing and very generous but what would happen is it would end up you know putting you in a position where you, you really you know you might not have enough money for food or something like that so you you it's almost like you have to be a little bit more frugal in the beginning of the week um, one last way that I kind of read this is when I do see the Empress um, I do think of someone who's very creative so it could be that you know again like it, it could be a situation where you want to be nurturing like um, sometimes in the beginning of the week this could be a little bit of a caution card like it it might be like an off pay week and you don't have enough money so you really um, as much as you want to support other people like you might want to give your last five dollars to charity because they really need it but that would really make the it really would be the difference as to whether or not you eat that day <laughs> um, so it's it's a little bit of a caution energy and this does kind of start over the weekend so it might be just kind of saying you know you're a generous person that is okay um, the other thing that I kind of get from it is don't be afraid to tell someone that you're you're a little short on funds. People will definitely understand. I kind of, you know, I, you know, I that happens all the time like actually this is a perfect example cuz this weekend, this upcoming weekend is Mother's Day weekend and um I I actually had to tell my mom, "Okay, I have a goodie box for you." Like she lives in another state. I have a goodie box for you, mom, but I'm going to have to mail it on Wednesday. I hope that's okay. And of course, that's like that's like a week after Mother's Day. And um so maybe that's also something that you might be saying, you know, you might be telling your mom, "Hey mom, you know, I want to send you a card. I want to send you chocolates but can we please it do you mind just letting it be a, a few days after Mother's Day if that's okay I'm a little I'm a little strapped and I get the sense like your mom's totally gonna understand right either that or if it's somebody else if you're a mom and you have to say look honey I can't you know hit me up next week I can't do it right now I'm just you know I really want to if I had the money it'd be yours um, so I'm kind of getting that energy from over the weekend in the beginning of the week now middle of the week is great you got the knight of cups and look at this um so with the knight of cups kind of facing this way um i do kind of sense that maybe um i kind of read this one of two ways the first way i kind of read it is like by the middle of the week you might actually have like a an influx of money again so like you said if you said hey mom I can't mail your box yet but I'm going to it's almost like you're making good on that and you're doing it like in a heart-centered way um, the other thing that I kind of get is that maybe in the middle of the week you really are taking action to take care of other people in a very empathetic way um, and you're really it's 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 almost like the moment that you have the ability to take the action you're taking it now because this is my new deck and it's, it is so cool i'm going to just go ahead and clarify it please clarify the knight of cups for deck number two with one card please <laughs> okay one card please oh, the wheel of fortune really wants to pop out i'm getting a little bit oh, oh my god <laughs> okay Okay, the Wheel of Fortune really wanted to pop out, and what I'm kind of seeing there is a lot of, um, uh, that's kind of like divine timing. Again, you know, I am kind of, I'm getting a timing kind of vibe with this, especially with the Pentacles. It's like when, when, when the time is right, when all the, you know, when everything's in place, when the money's there, if this is happening, it's guaranteed to happen. Um, I'm also seeing kind of the Ace of Wands. Um, what I'm so giggly about is that, um, and again, I, I explained, these decks overlap. So like here, I know it's kind of hard to see here. Let me grab, um, I'm actually going to grab the cloth that I use to wrap these cards because I use, um, and I will, I'll try to look for like a, a linen. Okay, there we go. See, you can totally see it now. Um, you see how you have the Knight of Cups, and what's cool is that like, um, on the side of uh, on the side of the card you see uh, KN for Knight, and then you see the emblem of the element in the right. These are the coolest cards ever. And then um, on on the Knight of Wands, you see the same thing. You see the the wand element there, and then the KN. And what's happening is 
in the middle of the week, you've got the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups, and look at this, guys. How cool is this? Oh my gosh. This is a gift from my sister, y'all. I'm, I'm digging these cards. And when she walked in the door and she's like, I've seen other card readers use this. Have you ever seen this deck before? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I've never been gifted a deck before from, from, from my family, which I'm so, first off, I'm stupid excited that my family accepts, uh, accepts how weirdo I am and will buy me something like a card deck that is this cool. But I'm sorry, I'm going to stop rambling. So middle of the week, you got two nights. And just for the record, you got the two, you got the two action knights, like you got the, the person who takes action and you got the person who takes action based on their emotions. So the way I'm kind of seeing this is this could, if this is your energy, you are definitely taking, okay, I'm hearing that song, taking care of business every day you know but i feel like if this is your energy if you're in the night energy it's like you're jumping on your horse and you're you're it's like you're taking care of everything that you couldn't take care of in the beginning of the week um the other thing that i kind of get is i feel like you're taking action to be to you're taking action that's like it's like the knight offers his cup. The knight of wands goes after, um, he's, he's adventurous. He takes actions on, he, he goes towards the things that make him feel good. So if this is your energy, you are taking care of people. Um, maybe you're sending money, you're sending that box to your mom, you're, you're checking in on the person that you, you wanted to at the beginning of the week. It's almost like, again, you're jumping on your horse and doing your thing. Now, if this is not your energy, someone is coming towards you in this energy. And that is some sudden action. Oh, wow, guys. Uh, Four of Wands, Page of Swords. Holy Toledo. And, okay, can I just tell you, see, again, this deck is radical. When you overlap all of these cards, they make one scene. How freaking cool is that right so what i'm seeing here is the four of wands i, I am actually guys pile two i'm seriously getting a sense that someone's going to be taking action towards you in the middle of the week you know this person um, this might be someone who is a little bit more juvenile. They don't necessarily have to be younger than you, but they, when they take this person, when they, when, you know, if you're a mom, this could be your teenager. Um, if, if this is a love interest, because you do have the Knight of Cups in the mix here, um, this is someone that you feel like you have a little bit of a soul tie with. Um, the other thing I get is with the Page of Swords, in the middle of the week, someone's really going to be taking, like, action towards you. Like, they're going to be showing their appreciation towards you, and it's going to be kind of in a romantic. It's going to be, like, if you get a chance to watch the How to Tarot on the Knight of Cups, it's going to be one of those overtures. Like, there's... There's going to be some kind of action taken towards you that is probably going to be in the social media realm. Um, either that or it's going to be... It's going to be some kind of message that other people can see. And this person, this person's taking action towards you. And it's going to be like kind of, it's going to be kind of a mission of love. And it's going to be, it's going to be kind of unexpected. What I'm kind of hesitating about is that this action is going to be kind of sudden. And it will be unexpected, but it, I know this is going to sound dumb, guys. It's going to be unexpected, but expected because you've got the Four of Wands here. And the Four of Wands talks about, it's that twin flame kind of energy. And not to sound strange, but you know how when, you, when you're really connected to someone emotionally, you can kind of sense when they're upset. And you, kind of, you can kind of, it's almost like a sixth sense where you can predict what they're going to do. I think someone's going to take some kind of action and it's almost like you're going to be surprised by it, but you're not going to be surprised because it's almost like there's some kind of instincts that you're mirroring each other, right? 
The other thing that I kind of get is that this could be, um, if this is you taking care of other people, again, you're, you're, you're very much in an empress energy in the beginning of the week. If you're taking care of other people, um, it's almost like, again, the two knights are almost like mirrors of each other. They're the, they're the two relationship uh, knights. Um, I'm, I hope this is making sense. Basically, if you're taking care of other people, it's almost like it's it's almost like you're going to be mirroring one another, and it's it's like through social media you're really going to be on the same page. Like if you you know just like when you you put on a post and and the person that's tagged in the post is is communicating back to you. It's like. Um, it's it's going to be that kind of parallel and that's what you see with the four of wands it's like you two being like in sync with one another but if that's going to be your energy taking care of other people and and those persons that you're taking care of reciprocating that energy back to you if this is not you doing that for other people I really sense like someone's going to be approaching you with some kind of like overture of love and it's going to be social media based um not to sound strange but it, there might be someone that you haven't talked to in a while that you've was really been on your mind and they might try to friend you in the middle of the week and it's i'm, I'm getting a sense of one of those it's like that small little gesture that means a whole freaking lot right like you know when you change your relationship status on a you know or you post that Instagram picture of you and the other person and it becomes Instagram official right something like that but I get the sense that the the action is gonna be it's gonna be a, a gesture it's gonna be a grand gesture it's gonna seem like something small it'll be something as you know little like like a text message or you know it could be a text message or an email saying hey would you care if I friended you on this you know here um, but it's almost like you can feel this person and you and this other person are exchanging energy. Um, but this is going to be a real big deal, guys. That's a big deal. Um, I'm sorry. I know that sounds so... The other thing that I get from this is that you're going to be real in, in sync with this person. Like it's going to, and actually your card really talks about that. You got the compromise card. So you're really going to be in tandem with somebody in the middle of the week. This really feels like a gesture though. Um, one other way I kind of read this and, and I'll just parallel it to my life. Um, I refurbished my dad. My dad passed away and I refurbished his record player. And what happened was I've, I've started to play all of his albums, uh, all of our family record albums, and I've started to add albums to the collection. And what I did is I went on Facebook and I asked all my friends, I said, okay, what albums do I need to listen to? And I especially asked, okay, what kind of crooner albums? You know, like Frank Sinatra, like Dino, Dean Martin, you know? I'm like, what albums do I need to listen to? And my friends were so cool. I got, a, like, I have this whole laundry list of, 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 of music that I got to listen to. So, and I, I've ordered the records and the records are coming in. And it's amazing how powerful music is. Music really connects people. And I'm, I'm hearing stories from my friends. Oh, my dad used to love Bing Crosby. He used to listen to this album and that album. And, and that always takes me back. And that makes me feel so good. I always smile. And it could be one of those things as simple as that. Like, you know, in the middle of the week, you're, you're, you're buying the record that, you know, your friend used to listen to as a child. Maybe you post it on Facebook like, hey, you know, so-and-so, look, I'm listening to, I'm listening to Bing Crosby. You're, it's, it is, it's like that twin flame. It's like that kindred spirit kind of energetic and y it's you taking action to make that happen. Um, either that or someone else is taking action to bring that kind of joy to you. So if that makes sense. And the way that that's being communicated, the way that, that you're learning that that's happening is probably through some kind of social media platform, you know, like Instagram, Facebook. TikTok, Twitter, whatever. Now, the end of the week is really great, guys. Now, first off, how cool is this? This is the Magician card. It's two dragons intertwined. It's bad, a badical. And then the other card you got is the Page of Wands. So, wow, guys, by the end of the week, you are really, like, you got two knights and you got two pages. 
And you got two fours, <laughs> which is crazy. I, I think that you're going to be in a very spirited energy this week. I think by the end of the week, um, you, you're feeling very childlike. The Page of Wands is a glorious energy. And if you get a chance, check out the, um, the How to Tarot on the Page of Wands. I always like to say it's, it's like getting up when you jump out of bed on a Saturday morning ready for summer camp. You know, it's like it's, it's an unbridled enthusiasm for life. And the magician is, is a manifester, right? He takes elements on the table and he makes things happen. I think by the weekend, you're really like, I, I, I get like kind of a kid in a candy store kind of energy. You're ready to make things happen. Um, you're ready to make things happen. Um, either that or if this if this is a carryover from whomever is approaching you in the middle of the week, you might feel real excited by the end of the week, it's almost like you feel like the world is your oyster. Um, but definitely by the weekend, um, you just feel excited. I feel like you're going to have a real excitement for like a real enthusiasm for life. Um, and, you know, maybe you are maybe you are diving into a new hobby and you're ready to like really invest in it. Like like again, with me and my record collection, I'm really excited to get started. Like I have I have all these records coming in and and, you know, what I'm doing is I'm designating one night to listen to one type of music. And so, uh, you know, and I've been posting that on Facebook and I've really been connecting to people. So this could be like kind of that energy like you're 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 ready to make this happen. Right. Um, the other thing I kind of get is that um, quite possibly when I see this combination of the magician and the page of wands, I kind of see it as like those weekends where, um, you know how when you wake up, you have, it's, I, I like to call it a no plan day. Like you, where, wherever the wind takes you, um, the other w way that I kind of read that is like maybe you are just trying out a new hobby or you're excited to check out that new coffee place and it's like again it's like you your eyes pop open at 8 a.m you throw the covers off and you're like let's make this happen right that's kind of the energy for your weekend and gosh guys that's so freaking beautiful that's really that's like that's like the best weekend ever i'm so excited for you that's really really cool you know um I do kind of see, I really get the sense, especially with the coloring of this, I get the sense like this is your energy, like you're just going to feel very childlike by the weekend. And you, you just, whatever you feel like doing, wherever you want to put your energy. Um, one other thing, anytime I see the Page of Wands, uh, especially when you have the Empress in the same week, you could be on a real creative streak. Like literally, you know, you have the Saturday all to yourself and you're like, okay, let me sew in the morning. Let me scrapbook in the afternoon. Let me go ahead and work on my garden for an hour. It's almost like you are so prolific and your energy is just making things happen, right? There's no, there's no toning down. Um, there's this great meme that I saw. It's like a Dilbert meme that says, you know, hey, can you tone it down a bit? And that he's like, there's no kill switch for awesome. That's what I'm kind of getting. There's no kill switch for awesome with you guys this weekend, next weekend. Um, and again, it is also Mother's Day weekend. So um, one other way I can kind of read that is that maybe, maybe you have, if you are a mom, you might have a real enthusiastic child who's really doing some inner, they, I feel like they might be a ball of energy, um, but you know, it's so funny. It's, it's a little ironic. Every single time Mother's Day fall, rolls, rolls around, um, you know, moms never really do what they want to do on Mother's Day. It really is about, you know, <laughs> sitting and receiving the cards and going out to brunch and, you know, um, it's almost like being in a receptive energy of, of, um, you know, what people want to do for you. Right. And actually, that is kind of the beginning. I'm sorry, the Mother's Day is the previous weekend. I'm sorry, I keep getting turned around with that. Sorry, guys. So you got your Oracle card, you got compromise, and it's number 49. And it says compromise, master teacher, concession, fairness, democracy, neutrality. And it says your master teacher is reminding you that nothing is entirely good or bad, even people and that every person has their own version of reality, which may not necessarily agree with yours. 
instead of arguing instead of arguing with or feeling wronged by those who refuse to submit to your point of view give up your righteous and rigid demands and broaden your perspective to include the interests of those with whom you struggle with um, mentally move towards center and open your mind to look towards to look at the center, the situation from their point of view Although it's easy to feel indignant and defensive as you deal with this current impasse, the truth is that no one's trying to harm you. Instead, your, your detractors are, are simply supporting your own interests and priorities. Um, or, I'm sorry, your instead your detractors are simply supporting their own interests and priorities, which are different from yours. Rather than reacting emotionally to their resistance, strive to understand them. Be, be mindful to not to overly um, be mindful and not overly self-centered, however justified it may feel. Strive to be fair instead. Your master teacher's message: accept that your interests are no more or no less important than those people around you. So the only way to progress to higher ground is to compromise. Now I am really getting this kind of at the beginning of the week. Um, it's possible that someone might be being a little stingy with you in the beginning of the week. And um, and you see with the Empress energy, that's really about being loving, you know, being kind, being giving, even though you're not always getting 100% of that in return. Now, it's, it's definitely not saying, you know, give yourself the short end of the stick purposefully, but it is kind of saying maybe try to look at the situation from this other person's point of view. I'm kind of getting that at, towards the beginning of the week. Also something about the green in this, in this, this color, you see how there's a lot of, um, a lot of greens and it's almost like the same coloring is kind of, um, in this card, um, as in the, as in your Oracle card. You even see mountains there. You see that it does, it looks like that. But um, so, yeah, you might have someone who's who's kind of withholding or, or being a little you feel like might be being a little emotionally stingy. But, um, you know, try try to focus on other things. Maybe this is saying, you know, if if someone is being a little bit stubborn with you, um, you know, go ahead and, um, you know, put put your energy into other things, other people, other relationships it doesn't have to be romantic. And I definitely feel like whatever it is, you know, don't, don't, don't stand still just because one area of your life is blocked, right? Um, the other thing is that definitely try to see the person, you know, try to, if you are in a disagreement with someone, try to see it from their perspective. But I definitely see, wow, by the middle of the week, I, I'm, this is really quite beautiful, guys. I really feel like someone either is going to, do some kind of grand gesture via social media. And this is someone that you know. It's someone that you kind of feel like um, like a psychic connection to. And by the end of the week, you just, I, I by the end of the week, I just feel like you're going to feel like a kid in a candy store. Like you're just going to, the weekend is going to be really exciting. You're going to be doing things that you love to do. Um, the other thing I do get is that if you do have one relationship that's being a little bit stubborn and and actually even the the little the little guy here you see how you see how the drawing even looks like the same you know with the head and the shoulders you know um, if someone is being a little bit kind of cold or stubborn uh, kill them with kindness is what I'm kind of getting the other thing is you know try to see the situation from their perspective and you know try not to judge them if they're if they're acting in kind of a, a strange way um, and then definitely go out and do the things that you love to do you know don't you know don't let anybody else's um, stagnant energy um, um, bring you down right you know um, just just let them you know give them uh, what do they say in in div divination send them love and light and just you know keep keep doing your thing right all right so last but not least we got the vice versa tarot i'm going to just give it a quick shuffle Ooh, four of wands uh five of wands sorry all right beginning of the week what is our energy deck number three i haven't used this deck in a while okay beginning of the week deck number one okay Okay, end of the week. Okay, one card. End of the week. Oh, 
guys. This is interesting energy. And we got the King of Wands on top. So let's go ahead and see what's... Ooh, fell right in my lap. Oh my gosh, discipline. Oh gosh, this is really interesting. All right, so we've got, we've got two major arcanas in your read this week. Uh, beginning of the week, you got Judgment and you got the Nine of Cups. So what I'm really getting here, guys, is that in the beginning of the week, I get the sense, like, um, with judgment, I really get the sense like you're being called to take some kind of action. Um, and what I'm kind of getting is that, that that calling, that instinct, there's there's also a lot of really instinctual cards here, because in the middle of the week, you got the, the high priestess. Um, you you have a really, you're, I, I get the sense that pile three, that at first off, I think that you're very intuitive, so you, you trust your Rice Krispies, right? Um, I think when you get an, an, um, an instinct to do something, especially when you get a pull to do something, you know that it's the universe telling you, hey, this is, this is the course of action you want to take. Now, what I'm kind of getting here is with the Nine of Cups underneath, there's there's something going on in your life. There's some kind of decision, some some kind of goal that you're being called to or drawn to that I think that you know would make you really happy. Like it would it would it would be like wish fulfillment for you. And it's it's almost like the other thing I kind of get is that the universe is kind of sending you signs. Um one one thing that's kind of standing out to me is that with the sun and with the clouds, um, you know, if you're in North America, we're kind of still we're we're at the end of spring, we're we're starting in on summer, but there's this time of year. Sometimes you do see some really beautiful sunsets or sunrises, and like the clouds are just really beautiful when they're illuminated. Um, I feel like that might be kind of your symbol, like your road sign. Maybe you're seeing like the rays, like really pretty rays of light in the sky. Um, you know, maybe you, if, if you commute to work, you're seeing it on your drive or, um, I just really get the sense like that's, that's like your symbol. Um, either that or if the universe is trying to, to give you hints, it's doing it like in the clouds. Um, what I just, I kind of got a, a pulse just now that says something about sitting outside and looking at the clouds. Maybe if when you get a break or something like that, you sit outside and you, you watch the clouds or, or look at the way that the, the light plays across the sky. But um, beginning of the week and especially over the weekend, um, I get the sense, and I know it sounds kind of woo-woo, but I get the sense that you're just, in, deep down inside of you, you're being called to do something um you might be called towards someone but um there there's something there's some kind of instinct that you're going to be having especially over the weekend and it's going to be real strong so over the weekend starting into the um the the beginning of the week there's just something that you're being really called to do and i think that you know like you know in your heart of hearts that it's what you're meant to do the other thing is like on top of the deck, you've got the King of Wands and the King of Wands, he's the mature masculine of his suit and he's he's had plenty of adventures, right? Like he's the king, so he, he knows what he's doing. But when he sets his sight on something and you can even see it, you see the look on his face. When he decides that he wants to take action about something, he takes action, right? There are There are no ifs, ands, or buts. He will go ahead and do it. Um, but here I'm almost getting kind of like, it's almost like you're, you're leaning back and deciding, Hmm, do I want to do this? Is this what I want to do? Because it's, it's one of those kind of green light go kind of things where you know that if you go after it, it's going to happen, right? Because he's the king and it's good to be the king. He, he, the king of wands, cause he's, that's, that's also the king of action, right? He makes things happen. So I just get the sense that, and I am getting a strong sense that you're seeing some kind of symbolism, some kind of, I call them road signs. It's like when I see the same symbol repeated, it's like the universe getting my attention. It's like a big, like a, like a neon light in Vegas or Tokyo, like, you know, okay, here's your sign. You know, this is what you need to be going towards. This is what you need to be doing. Um, 
I do get the sense that it's it has to do with um, and please tell me if this resonates. Are you seeing like the rays of God? Like when you look up in the sky and you see those beautiful sunsets, like the, the stuff out of Botticelli paintings, you know, <laughs> um, I'm kind of getting that that's going to be your road sign at the beginning of the week. And whatever you're, uh, please take note of whatever you're thinking about or whatever you're kind of mulling over in your mind. Like I, I feel like it's some kind of action that you want to take or some kind of direction that you want to go. Um, at the time when you're, whatever you're thinking about at the time that you see this beautiful sky, that's, that's the universe kind of calling you and giving you a sign to say, yes, this is, the, this is the path you want to be on, or this is the direction you want to go. And it, you feel like, and I think, you know, deep down in your heart of hearts that this would give you wish fulfillment. Like it would be, it would be what you want, right? The other thing is that the two, like, uh, to be honest, the two most self-assured and um, you know, uh, I'll be honest, cocky cards in these whole decks is like the, the King of Wands and the Knight of, of Cups. Not the Knight of, I'm sorry, not Knight of Cups, Nine of Cups. Um, and you see, you look at him, he's he's even kind of hanging on to his belt buckle there, right? You know? <laughs> um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like a relationship, but I just think, um, again, there's some kind of direction or some kind of goal, something that you want to do that you know will make you happy. And it's almost like over the weekend, you're getting kind of nudged in that direction, but you haven't taken action yet. It's almost like you're looking at it. Um, the other thing I kind of get is that you know that the moment you start off, the moment that you go to do it, it's going to get, it's going to happen. Right. And that's the, that's also, I'm getting a strong confidence from that. I'm getting a confidence from you. Like, okay, that's the direction. That's, that's the goal. Okay. You know, if, you know, if I go after this, I'm going to totally crush it. So do I want to go after it? Hmm. Let me think. Right. That's you're getting here but the universe is really kind of nudging you in the direction and um what i'm kind of getting here is the universe is kind of going we know that you know that we know that this is what you want to do and this is go get it go get it right now the middle of the week is interesting you got the high priestess and this is such a gorgeous card um so here again this is very spiritual energy here guys um again the high priestess she's the guardian of she's the guardian of the conscious and the unconscious world she knows what's going on in the 3d like the real world the, the tangible you know uh realm uh you know physical realm in which we live breathe work pay bills pay taxes and she also knows what's going on beyond the veil and beyond the veil is those spiritual contracts it's that higher being it's the it's it's your north node your your soul mission right so what i'm kind of getting here is that it's almost like in the beginning of the week you're kind of thinking about where you want to go on the physical plane and where the universe is kind of urging you to go and how it would make you happy in the physical in the in the real world and then by the, the middle of the week, I do feel like you're hanging back a little bit. The two, um, the, the high priestess is really about like weighing out. It's, she, she's about non-action, right? So I do think that it is almost as if you, I, I, I'm getting a strong theme of non-action, but the, the crazy part about it is that I think you're very action-oriented people. It's a little bit of an oxymoron, pile three, because... I feel like, again, I feel that like you're coming through like some, you might be a fire sign. And again, I feel like if, if, you just, if you decide to go after something, you crush it, you know, get it, got it, gone, you know. Um, and here I'm seeing that the universe is telling you, hey, you want to do this. This will make you happy. But then by the middle of the week, it's like you're leaning back. But the beautiful thing about leaning back, though, is that I do think that you're tuning in. You might be meditating a little bit. Um, either that or you might be having some real prophetic dreams. Now, I always kind of see with the book and with the, um, the cross, you could be... Um, 
you could be kind of delving into your spirituality and that doesn't have to be new age if if you're christian maybe you're reading bible verses maybe you're meditating on bible verses maybe um you know if you if you study astrology because you actually see the moon and the stars behind the high priestess maybe you're you're looking at the you're charting what's going on astrologically with you this week um you know maybe maybe you're doing some um some chakra clearing or um even you know again i'm, I'm kind of getting meditation um but i think you're you're leaning back and you're you're really trying to kind of sense what the higher purpose of what's going on in your life is and i i get the sense it isn't that you're reluctant to take action it's almost but it's almost like you really just you want to wait until it's the right time to take action and you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing which is very conscientious and again it, it is it's very it's it's a little bit of it, it is a little bit of of a catacorner to most fire energy because again I, I get the sense like if you decided to do something it would be so done um, but that one other way I can kind of read this is that maybe, um, if this, if this path does involve another person, um, this, this person that you want to approach you, it's almost like you want to make sure that they're really on board, you know, like if you're thinking about asking someone out or, or something like that, but the, the person that you want to approach might be being real mysterious or, you know, being a little elusive. Um, we did how to tarot on the high priestess and we talk about her being like the it girl. <laughs> you, you don't know what's going on in her head. Um, the other thing that's beautiful about the, the high priestess when she manifests as a person and that it can be a male person as well. It can be someone if you're thinking about asking a guy out and they're being real elusive or being kind of mysterious. Um, the, the it girl quiet, the reason that the high priestess has such an it girl or it guy quality is because they, they're so, it's almost like they're so in tune that you, you've ever met those spiritual people who don't need anything. They're, they're self-sufficient, they're balanced, that it's almost like they, they're not looking for anything in their life because they're just, they're in such a, um, in such a Zen place. It is, it is almost like they're, it is almost like they are totally in tune with the, the higher realms and earth. And you almost feel a little, a, a little too human to walk up to this person, right? They're so, they're so self-assured in this kind of otherworldly kind of way. And that it, that is what gives that person that it girl, it guy quality. They don't need anybody because they... Um, so if you're, if you feel like this plan, like you want to go forward, but in the middle of the week, you know, the person that you want to go towards is being a little elusive, a little mysterious, um, a little hard to pin down. <laughs> That's another way we can kind of read this energy. If it's your energy, it's almost like you are, you're refraining, you're leaning back, you're, re you're refusing to take any action because you want to make sure it's the right action. But I see you very, very spiritually balanced. I mean, again, this is another major arcana. You know, you don't, you don't get any more on the, le the spiritual level than the high priestess. So um, that could either be someone that you're, you got your eye on that just seems so, you know, like, you know, um, I always think of that song, She's So High Above Me, <laughs> like like uh, Joan of Arc or Aphrodite, you know? It's just kind of like this, this higher-than-thou figure. Now, by the end of the week, this is really interesting. This is really interesting, guys, because the end of the week, um, and again, this is the vice versa tarot where the, 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 the back of the card is not a formal card back. It represents, it, there's another image except it represents the card in reverse. So the front of the card is the Four of Swords. And the Four of Swords is about, again, it's it's about pulling back and t it's about non-action, right? It's, But here we have the Four of Swords in reverse. And what you see is you see a bunch of like forest fires in the background, right? But this person seems to be sleeping. Um, the other thing that you kind of get is that, let me see... Yeah, the, it's like the person's like refusing, um, 
we did talk about this too in the How to Tarot for the Four of Swords as well, is that when you see the Four of Swords in reverse, um, in the upright, the Four of Swords is like, okay, you need a rest. Uh, the Four of Swords in the upright is like, okay, your problems will be there when you get back. You need to go to your corner and take a break. But when the Four of Swords is reversed, it's like, okay, you know, break time's over. You know, uh, there's fires that need to be stomped. If it's, it's almost like by the end of the week, I am getting a strong sense like you're afraid to take action about something. It's almost like you want to know it's the right course of action, but you got the you got the freaking universe telling you, yes, hello, big neon sign, this direction, come here, you know, eat it, Joe's. <laughs> and then by the middle of the week, you're in the high priestess energy, either that or you're approaching someone in the high priestess energy. And the very fact that you could walk up to the high priestess or the very fact that you're manifesting in the high priestess energy means that whatever you're feeling on the spiritual realm, you're ready to go. You're ready. You, you can take action. You don't need to meditate anymore. Now, by the end of the week, it, it is almost like Underneath the Four of Swords, you got the Page of Pentacles and you got the Ace of Swords. And you know what? Oh my gosh, guys. Wow. Pile 3. Pile 3, please comment and tell me what's going on here. Um, it It is like you want to hop on that horse and tell someone off. You want to come out of this dormant energy it's almost as if you want to rush up to someone and give them a piece of your mind, but then also give them flowers. But you won't do it. You're going to, you, you're, you're, I, I always say it's like riding out fifth. You're, you're ready to get back into the game, but you're refusing to get back in the game. And, and, uh, you know, and, and part of my French, but shit's on fire. You know, you gotta, you gotta get back out there. Shit's on fire, you know, um, so if this is some kind of goal that's been going on, you know, if this is some kind of path that you've been kind of resisting, um, the, the universe is really like being like, you know, can get in the game, you, you know, it's really trying to tag you. Um, and honestly, I almost get like something, something might even be kind of baiting you verbally. Like you, you it's almost like you're afraid to come out of this uh, reserved energy because if you hop into it, it would be the first step towards, it would be the first step towards something really tangible. And there would be a lot of clearing the air going on. Like, again, th there's something about this situation. If once the universe is asking you to take action. You know it's time to take action. By the end of the week, you're still you're still pretending like you're asleep. You're pretending like you're not hearing the call. But you hear the call. You hear the call. The other thing that I kind of get is that you might have people around you that's really trying to get get you to rally, but it's like I, I'm, I'm getting either the feeling like you're resisting it because you know that if you take action, it's going to it's going to start the ball rolling and there'll be no turning back. So you're resisting it. And even though stuff's on fire and you need to go fire stomp, right, you really need to go fire stomp. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that it's quite possible that you you're hesitant to take action because if you do take action, you're really going to tell someone off. You really are going to clear the air and you really will. That will be the first step. That'll be like the, that'll be the, um, the, the breaking of the ground, like literally that first shovel into the dirt of going towards something completely new. And I think, I think you're resisting that a little bit, but it's it's really crazy guys you've got the whole you got the universe totally cheering you on and you even you've got you've got some elements of this that's really kind of sparking you to take this action and um 
you know, one other thing is that if this is something like, you know, putting a down payment on something, you know, maybe you're buying a new car, maybe you're moving to a new house, it's really kind of saying, you know, now's the time, you know, the situation that you're in is, is deteriorating and you can't just, you know, you can't just stay in the coma, you know, you can't just stay sleeping in the back room while everything's burning down. You got to go ahead and take that first action. Um, but I do see by the end of the week, you are still going to be in that reserved energy. You've got all this brewing underneath the surface, but you're still, again, it's the four of swords in reverse. Now, one other way I can kind of read that is four of swords in the reverse can sometimes mean that you are coming out of that, that resting energy. But the imagery that I see here is more of the four of swords in reverse in the negative sense where you, you should be coming out of that resting energy, but you're not. Um, and, and what would happen is the moment that you do, the moment that you get in the game, you know. I'm sorry, I, I am hearing that cheese bell song from... Um, high school musical get get your head in the game and <laughs> get your head in the game you know it's almost like the universe is trying to push you uh, to do that but and you're ready to you're ready to it's just uh, again it, I, again I, I'm getting the sense like the genie would be out of the bottle if you do this if you take this action it's gonna be done you know one and done um, and it's almost like you're not ready to um, but I do also get the sense like you're almost hiding be and I don't mean this in a mean way. I do this too all the time. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's almost like you're saying, well, I just, I need a little bit more time. I need a little bit, just a, just a little bit more affirmation. Um, and, but I do see that, I do think that you're seeing symbols. I think you're seeing road signs. It may not, it could be rays of God, but I, I, I'm kind of seeing that, but a, a sign, whatever, symbol if you keep seeing the same symbol over and over again that's that's the universe's call for you to, to go it's call to action it's like a bugle call um you know that you need to you know you want to you want to do something now i really don't think that this is another person i mean this could because this is an older man you know this could be that you're ready to take action but there's someone someone an elder or someone that you respect that you have to kind of adhere to their wishes you know so by the weekend it's like you want to you want to break ground you want to go ahead and do something but somebody is kind of um someone's holding back and that's what's holding up the show right um and what it is is that you almost have to wait for them to take action and then everything will will get started now, this is really interesting, guys. The card you got is you got Discipline, and it's card number 33. And it says, um, there's different guides on different cards, and this says Master Teacher. So what it says, and we'll go ahead and read it, is it says, Dedication, Training, Work, and Skills. Whatever you desire in life can be created, but only if you're willing to do the necessary work. That means no shortcuts, no bypasses, and no free lunches. The only path to success is discipline and con consistency. Fortunately, your master teacher is present, helping you develop a heartfelt and mature work ethic by helping by getting organized and becoming practical in your approach to achieving your goals. Examine your heart and be willing to do what what it tells you. Whatever it whatever it takes to reach your aims. If you don't know what you must do, then learn. Seek out the help of mentors and guides who specialize in your field of interest. Study and learn with an open heart and mind and set your standards high. Your master teacher reminds you, mastery in any area only comes from demanding nothing less than the best from yourself. So, wow, guys, I am really kind of seeing that in this seam. Again, you know, you have inspiration that's calling you to try something um, but it is just saying that you you do um, you want to put effort towards it and I know that and believe me I know that always sounds really trite and vague when you're like okay well I don't know what direction I'm supposed to go but um, I do get the sense that you might be getting like little hints through symbols as to what direction and really it, it really is as simple as just taking one step you know one step towards you know um, 
if 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 you feel instinctually you're you're very in tune um spiritually so if if you feel like drawn to go someplace like if all of a sudden you 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 drive past a coffee shop and you feel really inexplicably drawn to go inside and get a coffee there might be someone inside that you're meant to meet right that might you know introduce you to your next career opportunity or something um either that or you know by by following what you're drawn to it's i get the sense that this week you're going to be seeing a lot of signs about what your next course of action is and um i think by the end of the week it's almost like you you know um the other thing i kind of get is like you're almost hesitant you don't want to put so much stock into like supernatural direction you know but um again it doesn't have to be real big commitments you don't have to quit your job and you know do the the spiritual woo woo thing that you do um you can go very slowly but it is kind of saying that the time of resting is coming to an end and you know by the weekend you really do want to kind of um you you might be really called to jump into the fray a little bit um, and by doing that, it's it's going to be that first step. It's going to be breaking ground for something really new, and you you're going to be you're going to be seeing that. So by the end of the week, really pay attention to where you know what it is that that's calling to you or or motivating you to take action, because that's going to be a big sign as to where you want to go next. But wow, guys, oh my gosh, all three piles are really great. Um, this is a really good week. So I thank you so much for joining me. Um, I did want to just take a minute to say that um, um, my, my uh, subscribes, my, I want to thank my subscribers so much. We did exceed the 200 subscriber mark, and I am really thrilled. Um, again, I'm a small channel, and I am very grateful for everyone who, who follows my channel and checks out my videos. Um, I will be trying to post some new special readings and deck collections again soon and I hope everyone has a good week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.